Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It is Tuesday, Tuesday, the 10th of November, 2020. I wanted to draw for fun, but also revisit some questions I got from the Maryland Institute College of Art students in Jackie Ross's pre-production class yesterday. I had the privilege and honor of speaking to some students. And let me first start off by saying my mind is blown that these kids I'm talking to are probably born in the new millennium. That's wild to me. I guess that means I'm getting old or these kids are really young or whatever it was. But I had some really interesting questions from them. And I, in the moment, I was thinking about my lesson and trying to demonstrate a, a drawing. And we ended up with a pretty simple drawing to talk about three rules of three. Now, this was the drawing I ended up doing for that class alive. And it's not as refined as I would have liked, but I wanted to explain a couple things, uh, maybe a tri-color relationship, but ultimately the rule of thirds where you're dividing the canvas up into uh, third lines and finding points of power along those line intersections. And then also talking about three point lighting. And lastly, a lesson I learned from Taylor Fisher, which was a big, medium, small. It's good to, if you're, if you're struggling with your composition, composition, Maybe you can look to the golden ratio, the golden section, and then using relationships within the golden section to create big objects, medium sized objects, and small sized objects that create a balance of sizes and scales. So maybe I'll try to preach some of that, but also try to brainstorm and draw a little bit something for you guys all today. I want to warm up uh, my creative juices while, uh, you know, helping you guys out with some content that it's different than what you're used to, I suppose. So let's just get going. I'm recording now. Audio is probably a little quiet, but something I'm going to try working on is saying hello to Drew. Number one. Hi, Drew. Thanks for joining the podcast, Tom Cast Drawing Time. And two is try. I need to slow down. I realized during lectures, I get really excited and I can talk very, very fast. So let's leave some more gaps and bring it down a little bit. I figured out in open broadcast studio how to monitor my own audio, which, whoa, look at this inception like thing. This is open broadcast studio. There is a little mix audio mix thing down in the bottom and I can hear myself as I'm streaming, but there is a delay on it. And that's a little weird to get used to. It, it feels like I'm talking in a, uh, if you ever talk to yourself in the shower with like a high finish tile room, it's a little bit of that kind of echo to it. It's strange. But some of the lessons I talked about yesterday was big, little, small, big, medium, small. If you could use my, my hypothesis is if you subdivide the golden section rectangle uh, three times, which is basically by a third each time. So you have this, this big outer shape and then the bottom third and then a third of that you have a relationship that's something like this, big, medium, small, and that might be a good place to start for design in general. So that could be, how do we, what's a good example of using this in design? Well, what if we wanted to draw a lamp? So we have our overall rectangle, that's a golden section, and then we subdivide that into a third uh, and then let's, that's just, maybe just start with this kind of shape. And then we want to divide that into a third, maybe a third again, something like this. Maybe that shape goes down here. And then we can just come up with like subdivided sections. So this is already an aesthetically somewhat pleasing design because we have golden section kind of elements in it. So that's my hypothesis of how a student can use golden section just to start from nothing and make it into something. There's a couple interesting questions I got from the students and one of them was what to draw. I, I think it's really odd that a student would ask, what do I draw? Because hopefully by the time they're in college, they've already been drawing for like 10 years and they already have an, an image that's chosen. So. Let me flip that subject on like, let's add a word to that question, not what should I draw, but what should I be drawing now? 
in context with the time we're in? And I think that's a great question. I was going back through, hello, Brandon. Thanks for joining the stream today. Thanks for joining the stream. I'm glad to have you uh, on here today. I was going back in time. The image I showed off in the preview for the stream today was a drawing from Project, an unreleased game I worked on nine years ago now. And I would love to show you all more, but I'm probably uh, limited to what this was not used at all in the game. And it was a brainstorming image based on my trips out to Gettysburg and the lessons I learned about the American Civil War. I wanted to draw a God's eye point of view of maybe a stylized encampment, something that isn't realistic. It's more exaggerated. So some exaggerations we have here are the size of the men compared to the size of the buildings. And that's something we saw a lot in books of the like middle 60s, 50s and 60s, talking about the Civil War and maps drawn from uh, turn of the century indicating what those towns looked like. But then again, I kind of wonder, were houses just that much smaller back then? They probably were. They probably were. There was some excellent work done on that project, and a lot of it can't be shown. But inspiration we were drawing from was this book. And I don't even know what it was called. Probably like the great battlefields of the Civil War, circa 1960 or something. And I thought these were really interesting. Sid Meier showed me this book and thought it was super interesting. And I thought, what like a great, this reminded me of all like the childhood map. Like there was a kid's book. It was like Babar's World or something about this elephant family who would go to the market. And my mom's... Um, my mom always talked about Edward Scarry's uh, busy people. There's all these animal people that would go around in the world. It's kind of reminded me of that, that God's eye point of view. It resonated with me particularly because I had worked on God games, 4X games, civilization style games. And this had that point of view. And, and then it clicked. It's, oh, it's flipped. Sid saw this book when he was a kid and thought it would be cool to make games, interactive versions of this book. Boom. That's it. That's all it took. <laughs> Forget about years of learning how to program, years of developing other kinds of game titles, including uh, F-117 and these uh, aircraft interception games that Sid is also known for, for starting Microprose with. But I thought this was really, really cool. How informative, it's beautiful and it's informative and descriptive. Is it the scale? Maybe loose, probably loosely i don't know we didn't have drone footage and cessna overflies back then to see what the battlefield really looked like but today we do i thought this is super cool this looks like antietam with the bridge and you can see the confederates in the gray fighting the union in the blue now there was a civil war game that came out from sid back in the day called sid myers gettysburg and uh, then there's been a couple games that have revisited that. I think it was a Civil War Generals game made by a very different company. But I did a lot of studying for about a year about the Civil War. Not saying that we were redoing Gettysburg or the Civil War. We were using this as an inspiration for a different title. I can tell you guys that much without being sued, hopefully. But it never saw the light of day, and now it's like nine years old. That is a lesson I wish I could have talked. I forgot to mention to the students yesterday, which is... Some ideas are great and take a long time to develop. And just because you have an idea in the year 2020 doesn't mean that it's ready for market until anytime soon. It could be 2030, 2040. Some of these ideas you might have reacting to something will take a long time to make. Maybe it requires a special kind of team, maybe a new kind of technology. Maybe you just have more time to develop the thing. Maybe you have to get yourself to a certain level of uh, wealth in order to self-fund developing that project or maybe it's something that you come up with when you're working and you don't have time and you have to wait till you retire to develop this idea it's probably because it's niche a lot of things you work on when you're young are general mass appeal kind of product something that is simple and appeals to a mass market if you want to do something more niche more interesting more cultish then you probably need to do that on your own it's very hard to get funding for stuff like that recently watched Rocky Horror Picture Show for the first time in my life because I was too afraid to watch that film when I was younger. But now that I'm older, I can have a couple beers and say, look, I need to watch this film 
just for the understanding of history and cinema. And uh, who doesn't love Tim Curry, you know? Very exciting to watch. Uh, plus, just it's a hard film to watch if you're really insecure. <laughs> I think it's so weird and so uh, in your face and almost oppressive. If you're in a movie theater watching that film and you're uncomfortable, you might feel trapped. So for me, it took me 37 years to feel confident enough that this film is not going to hurt me if I watch it. Let's draw something. Drew, Drew and Brandon are here hanging out. Let's draw something kind of fun. I don't know. Uh, so that question was, what should I be drawing? And what should I be... And I'm, I'm changing that question into what should I be drawing now? Well, it, at the time in the class, I said, I don't know, a blade of grass drawing. Something beautiful and maybe from nature, but keep it simple. Keep something simple. I like drawing people. So that's usually where I start out. Just draw some characters. I've been listening to a lot of Tool lately. Maynard, I think, is the musical her hero we need but don't deserve. I know he's a polarizing figure, and probably because he's just smarter than everybody else. I think his IQ is well north of 200. And some people, in my experience, people with super high IQs are just so hard to relate to because they're operating at another level. They're operating with the artificial intelligences. They're not operating with the riffraff like you and me and Steve. I'm not saying Steve's riffraff. I love Steve. But the average person versus the uber uber brain big brains it's important to be patient just because you might learn something but it's you might need to grow to understand something you might need to have different experiences to understand a certain piece of music and like i knew ever since i was 13 years old at ozfest when my sister molly took me to go see ozfest in new jersey that there was this band tool there and there was this interesting following about it uh, and the, there was something going on there, even though I couldn't appreciate what it was. And, you know, to this day, I still haven't taken psychedelics. So there's probably two thirds of what Tool's talking about that I still don't get. and probably never will get. But I know it's there's something there. It's kind of like the truth is out there. X-Files style. There's aliens floating above the earth and they seeded the planet. And Alex Jones comes on and says, the deep state is telling us that... Bohemian Grove is celebrating the aliens and worshiping Moloch and all this kind of stuff. And Tool is right there and says, Alex Jones, chill out. Chill out, dude. We must embrace. This is the universe that we now live in. And then Maynard comes out on stage with some crazy face paint, looking like a human embodiment of what's under the mask in The Mandalorian. That's how I feel about that. So we're going to draw a crazy dude. Is this fun? I don't know. Let's, let's add some wild things on this guy maybe he's got some spikes on his shoulders because who doesn't love some weird aliens and mutants right maybe some batman style claws that'd be fun i don't really love this pose but i like some of the ideas here he's feeling a little darth maulish i never liked the horns on top of the skull for the darth maul guy uh what if we wanted to reimagine a darth maul kind of character like if Maynard and Darth Maul blended together, um, what would that look like? What would that look like? Let's go look up. Let's go pull up an image of Maynard. So you guys know what I'm talking about. He's someone who likes wearing a bunch of different outfits as he performs. He has all these different personas that he performs with. Uh, whether he's some cow, like hipster cowboy with a mohawk. Or he's the ev evangelist character that he, he puts on. Sometimes he gender bends and puts on ladies' clothing. He's just out there, man. He's trying to get a rise. Dressed up like a devil once. Uh, so let's take, let's take a little bit of Maynard in our brain load. And let's take some uh, Darth Maul and uh, Star Wars. Can you tell I'm jazzed about Star Wars right now? Because I just watched two episodes of Mandalorian last night rewind that i watched five episodes of mandalorian last night two of the new season and all right what do we like about darth maul well we like the dual lightsaber we like the all black villain uh just the obvious villain face paint i always thought it was a little too over the top because to me it didn't look like it never looked like that was a genetic pattern it looked like that was 
face paint. I wonder if in the in the show it's supposed to be full body tattooing. I would I would believe that. I would believe that. So lots of heavy clothing with the belt in the middle. The middle belt thing is pretty popular in the Star Wars universe. Um, but I'm, I'm taking some inspiration from one of Maynard's face makeup thing with the, the T-shape and also the Mandalorian look, which is kind of a Spartan look too. Because Man Mando slash Boba Fett helmet is this T-line with the cheekbones cut out and then this helmet ridge thing. And Boba's got the um, antenna on top, which we can talk about what that actually represents in the TV show. No spoilers. No spoilers in the TV show. Uh, and then we have the Spartan helmet, which has the eyes and then the nose piece and then something like uh, that, which is clearly the inspiration for uh, the Boba Fett thing, the Spartan style helmet. If you watch 300, you know what I'm talking about. Let's make this a little bit brighter. And let's, uh, let's draw a character. Let's draw the character. What do you guys think? What do you think out there? Devin says, love the new season of Mando. That LED live render background stuff is amazing. I agree. My friend Chris Kaufman worked on that season one. Did some environmental modeling for it using Unreal Engine. Joe always uh, Joe said, I always thought it was supposed to be tats. Welcome to the broadcast, Joe. Joe says, I think I read it in a Star Wars Wikipedia once. You know, that makes sense to me, Joanne. I feel like I saw that in one of those picture books that's in that was in Barnes and Noble when I was still going to a Barnes and Noble and going to the Star Wars section and there was all those little illustrated booklets and guides and stuff and they have a Darth Maul picture and it says in the captions his face was tattooed to be this way I, I'd believe that the more I've learned about tattoos that makes a little bit more sense to me but it's still so uncomfortable I don't know why that is the tattoo like a humanoid figure with tattoo all across his skin is somehow more disturbing than one of those crazy aliens with the Jim Henson uh, puppet headset stuff. I love the character in episode two, 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 the, the passenger that, that was so well done as far as like puppetry and execution of, of an alien in a show. I just thought it was really funny. Maybe a little trite, maybe a little simple, but it's still cool to see, and that's that's some alien stuff that Star Trek never wanted to touch, but in Star Star Wars, like whatever you want, and it's like now that Favreau is running Star Wars, he's getting some more of the funny human element to it. Like let's let's expose some of the humanity or the innocence, and humanity being like faults, like faults and. Uh, foibles and idiosyncrasies well, let's get weird with it and that's fun the star wars is, is it's kind of an embracing of the weird i think star wars and rocky horror both have their hearts in a similar opera house if you will you know it's not the same vein it's not the same you know it might not even be the same school district but they're in the same state which is like let's explore the different aspects of life and where, what you're born as versus what you choose to be. And I think those are, that's like part of the hero's journey. All right. So now we're, but we're going to get into the villain stuff. Let's draw. Cause you guys are here to maybe one part, hear me rant part two, maybe learn something about drawing. Uh, but I know just talking is kind of boring and just drawing is kind of boring. So we're going to do a little bit of both. Love the comments. Uh, keep them coming in. Uh, we got some torso thing. I want the full figure, and I want a little bit more of an action-y pose. Let's draw again. Um, I did a shooting match over the weekend, and I, I like the photo. I took a photo, or my friend got video of me, and I was in a pose that I really liked, which had, like, my thighs looking really muscular and some tight pants. And it's interesting. If you're just big enough, you can be really fat and look muscly if you wear the right clothes. Fashion is uh, a really impressive. <laughs> uh, I need to lose weight, ladies and gentlemen, real, real bad. 
So I was in something like some kind of pose, something like this with a rifle, um, a walking along a, a beam and it felt kind of dynamic. So what if we can get, this is definitely a weapon shooting pose, but what if we could do something like that with a lightsaber? Let's, let's draw another one. Um, some kind of point maybe, maybe so. All right, it's a figure that's going to op occupy this space loosely. This is a technique I've seen a lot of people do. If you don't want to draw over the lines, you give yourself a little framework to work within. And then if you go outside of it, it's fine because your canvas is bigger. Um, what do I want to do? Um, so what if... Trying to, trying to make it... Let's really exaggerate it out. And Star Wars loves boots, so we're gonna we're gonna definitely emphasize boot couture here. Um, so Maynard's got something when he performs. He's got these megaphones and stuff like hanging on his back which I thought was kind of interesting. Like it was a mic on a megaphone that's slung and he's got this uh, microphone up here too. And then he's got the Mohawk thing. Uh, maybe, maybe something like this. All right, so we got, we got like a microphone up here. Maybe it's an elbow out situation. And he's really, I want to make him really contorted like he's in some kind of agony because Maynard likes to perform with a ton of emotion. Um, I really enjoyed watching the live Pussifer performance from Arcosanti, I think. Ar Arcosanti? That was last two weekends ago. Joe and I watched it. I thought it was really cool and kind of inspiring. His new... Uh, project. Let's see, holding some kind of sword. All right, so I'm starting to develop this idea of like the singer meets martial performer. Let's do another, let's do another drawing. So one thing I can do is I can copy, what's great about Photoshop is you can copy paste, move stuff all over the place. So I'm gonna copy this drawing. It's not strong enough yet. Let's evolve it. I'm gonna shrink it down into the corner and then do another drawing based on that. Uh, Devin says Darth Maul with an egg water tank backpack. Mmm. Mm-hmm. Some pickled eggs. I think that'd be pretty dope. Pickled eggs, man. That was that was pretty interesting. But what a point of tension. What a point. I don't want to give away too many spoilers, but that element added so much tension to the show. On an already an intense show, there's this extra bit of tension that's like unfreaking controllable because there's three different things going on at the same time. It drove me batty. It drove me batty and made me hungry at the same time, Devin. It's like, man, I don't like hard-boiled eggs. Joe knows that. But I really wanted a hard-boiled egg in that scene with a little, little sriracha on top. Maybe some Old Bay and some sriracha. Maybe an onion ring wrapped around it. All right, so I want a little bit more facing the viewer. I like that one leg kicked out really far. Now Maynard isn't a tall guy. He's like 5'7". He's just got very muscly thighs. So we're going to keep that element of Maynard. Some little Eliezer Medina style, like crazy leg action.
this is this is starting to feel kind of fun uh, so I want the I want the tricep like really exaggerated here and then what's this this motion look like where his arm is extended backwards holding uh, the sword with the blade down How's that feel? I'm not crazy about it. I'm starting to like this development though. So I want to keep going and refining a bit more. See, we're, we're resolving, we're refining an idea. We have a very loose idea and we're refining it. Some people can picture the idea very clearly. I have a very foggy idea of what I want. And this is taking us through the process of uh, taking that up another notch. So I'm gonna uh, take this guy, he's almost there. Let's uh, let's take this and then move it again. So I don't love it, but we're we're getting somewhere. Let's just shrink it down. We can put it up in the corner here. Uh, you know, we could take this and flip it. Something I hate about myself is saying, you know, um, uh, yeah, like, unless it's an intentional metaphor or simile. Devin says he loves it. Good. I'm glad you agree with me, and I'm gl glad you love it. So we're getting kind of hero Olympian look. The the bent knee is not as dynamic as the extended knee. So let's see if we can make that uh, more dynamic too. What if what if that knee is coming towards us? Let's start with the the leg. Leg. Let's start with the leg and the foot. That's good looking foot, you might say. Those are not high socks, those are boots, ladies and gentlemen. I know you wanted those to be some high socks. You can do a version of high socks, maybe later. All right, so we got this one leg. Now, how do we support that leg? Um, let's build the other, the rest of the body off of that. Smaller foot. All right, so if this is the, if that's the other leg coming way out, but it's foreshortened. This body is going to need to be completely contorted to balance off that. And I think that's actually pretty cool. Let's get some parallel, maybe muscle flex. Um, something else Vayner does that's super interesting is he has two mics. I've seen where he'll have one mic. We use these these glass cleaner bottles he'll have one mic right up on his on his mouth like this and then another mic up here and then it creates like a little bit of a delay like an analog style delay when he's singing or he'll have one mic that's got a different filter on it and he can switch back and forth and her he's even had like special mounts that are connected and one of the really funny things Devin might appreciate this if you used a steady cam in the Akosanti video he had a steady cam mic stand coming out from his belt buckle and he could dance, and the mic would just stay hovered right where he was. It was pretty cool. If I was a lead singer, I would want the Steadicam mic stand. All right, now we're getting, now we're getting, now we're getting dynamic. Okay, now this is fun. This is why the warm-up process is important. Jackie Ross asked me how many drawings do you do before, or how many ideas do you go through before you get to the right one for her students, and I was like, dozens. A lot. It's a lot of refinement, a lot of trial and error. And at me being a dumb dude, I brute force my solutions in life. I have to learn things the hard way. I had to smash my car into a light post in the parking lot, driving home on a Friday rainy night once just to learn. Don't mess with the radio while you're moving in a parking lot. Set the radio, turn it on, and if Green Day comes up and it's not a song you like because you're not in that mood, wait until you're out of the turn to change the station and instead of driving right into a light post in the middle and ruining your whole weekend. That happened to me. But I had to learn that the hard way. It's the hard way. I had to experience it to know that was the wrong thing to do. Post in the comments something that you knew you shouldn't do, but you did anyway because you had to learn it the hard way.
And now all you got stories. All right, so this is starting to feel dynamic. This is starting to feel dynamic and interesting. You got one mic there. Let's um, maybe, so one mic and then another another mic. This will be interesting, having a couple microphones. And then you've got something, I kind of like the idea of the slung megaphone. And do I want cable? I kind of want a cable wrapped around his i'm not into bondage but i think the the use of a of a cord or a line to show um contour is pretty great so we're gonna we're gonna wrap the mic line around him so he's got these two lines is there something we can do with this line to make it emotive And use that line in a way that gives us uh, more energy. That's something I was talking about with the students yesterday. Power lines are something great. You know, any uh, if you want to create a setting using infrastructure that everyone's familiar with, gas stations, power lines, uh, warehouses, anything that's universal, train tracks, something that's universally a symbol of civilization, take that infrastructure and based on how you decay that familiar infrastructure, you can communicate setting and mood in a, in a very intense way. Okay, so this is, I'm feeling really good about the, the dynamism. Is that a word? Dy dynamism. Uh, do I want the, the mohawk kind of like loose and flowing? That'd be interesting, but it's a little too, I, I kind of like the rigidity though of a, of a well-pressed, Mohawk. Is there something we can do that's different? See, that's comical. It's too crown shaped. What if it's just a, a short, a short mohawk? Start with that, and then we want the face paint. It's going to be something like this. All right, and then where's the other arm? The other arm. kind of sort out here that's a little low let's draw another layer let's do uh, different different color to, to brainstorm this out what if the arms up I really need to isolate this to, to get the composition to make sense to me so I'm gonna select everything here and then copy it into a new layer Wrong layer. I needed that. New layer there. So the arm down isn't isn't very exciting in this. I want to fill the page in an interesting way. So we got corners. We got four corners. Let's see if we can use this angles to those corners to do something more interesting. So I'm gonna let's select this knee and let's like bring it maybe bring it back just a little bit. What if we do something like there? And then this is a little bit more dynamic, a little bit more coming at you. What if this is, is going off to the side, a little bit more exaggerated? We're also thinking about our lens. Is this a wide angle lens where we have a lot of foreshortening or is this a telephoto lens where we're seeing it from kind of far apart? Devin's got words. Joe's got words too. Um, let's see what they said. Devin said, big hills on skateboards, learn about speed wobbles real quick. That's right. That is absolutely right. Joe likes it. Devin says, bikes. Bikes, less, less on the speed wobbles. I got to talk to Tony Hawk once about going down the mega ramp. The mega ramp in the X Games is this giant skateboard ramp that launches people about 35 miles an hour off a very incredible dip launch. It's, it's like ski jumps on skateboards and Tony said you got to tighten your trucks way down man because those wobbles are real Joe said sunscreen in the eyes as a little kid <sighs> ooh ooh I hate that feeling because it doesn't come out that goopy stuff like you could just keep hosing your eyeballs with all the water and it's still not getting that junk out Drew says trying to cut between an island and land when I knew it was shallow wasn't sure I can make it 
Had to try. Is that in a sailboat? Drew said, didn't make it. Almost got stuck in the mud on my in-law's motorboat. Oh. Boat problems, man. Boat problems. Isn't that funny? Like Boating, you have to be aware of this unseen thing. This like underwater area. Um, it's such anxiety. Like submarine movies are kind of amazing because you're driving something without being able to see where you're going. Or the idea is like hunt for the red October. You're navigating through red route, red route one and they can't see where they're going. They're just going by the chart. It's all instrument, flying by instrumentation. Flying in clouds. Rest in peace, Kobe. Helicopter pilot thought he could trust his instruments. Wasn't looking at his instruments. I don't know what happened. I heard people at the range this weekend talking about the Kobe accident. A couple of pilots. Right, let's, I want to see what this arm looks like. Uh, I think music's really inspirational. I should have said that uh, to the students that maybe listen to a piece of music and take a simple lesson from that. Ooh, I kind of like that he's holding like a baton or a whip or something. So maybe instead of the two microphones in one hand, we have like a second microphone. And then the, the cord is like this whip. Is that interesting? Let's try a couple more drawings. Uh, what if what if that arm comes like back, like really hyperextended back here? Then the back would be more like this. Let's copy this into a new layer. New layer and then this erase. That's the beautiful thing about Photoshop, ladies and gentlemen, is you got all the layers. You can do so many brainstorming versions. You can paint over the idea you have. And then again, this is something else I wish I demonstrated to the students that you can just copy paste and refine, refine, or develop, develop, develop your idea by painting over what you already have. Uh, using blue lines is something that L taught me and you can go to the multiply using a blue line and draw over just like an animation pencil. Um, so that that's straight up. Okay, so is that a microphone? Um, I'm getting excited about the idea of the microphone as like laser whip. Is that fun? Let's try one more with the arm in a different, slightly different position. Let's do one more with uh, the shoulder more down. I recently saw uh, Red Dragon with Joe. That was fun. And the musculature, Ray, Ray Fines must have did some serious working out. Drew, what happened with the boats? How did you get out? Did you get towed out of there? Or did you have to wait for high tide to come in? Stuck in the mud. Is stuck in the mud a phrase based on like vehicles stuck in the mud or boats stuck in the mud? Like where'd it come from? I could see that being a very old, an older phrase, like hundreds of years older if it was referring to boats instead of uh, automobiles and trucks and stuff. Yeah, this, this is cool. So we got the leg coming out and then the arm going back and then like one arm forward and then this... Um, line is is whipping us back around again i think that might be fun i don't like the direction so much maybe it's up yeah it's just like a lot of energy in that whip maybe that'd be kind of cool let's get the 
The anatomy on this arm is going to be pretty challenging, ladies and gentlemen. And then he's probably not going to get his head around that much. He's probably going to get his head around just, just kind of glancing. The nose is going to be right on the mic. I've made a lot of work for myself here this morning, but that's okay because I love all y'all, and we're gonna we're gonna do this work for you. Let's get this really corked out. Deltoid trap comes around and tricep elbow forearm foreshortening. Is the is the wrist going down? I'll make sure it's obvious to the microphone. How does that silhouette feel? Is over more like a like a Spartan. I think that's cool. All right, this is starting to feel like something. The wrist down is a little too dancery. I, I think I want the fist to be more obvious. Really get the knuckles evident, and then maybe these microphones are lightsaber inspired here. So they got all kinds of doodads and gadgets and illumination and and whatnot. That's gonna be fun. Okay, I'm feeling pretty excited about this. Let's get a flip on this to make sure it's still balanced. Image, image rotation, flip horizontal. Okay, cool. So immediately I'm seeing it's leaning too far over. So I got. I want to rotate this around a little bit. Drew said he just shifted the weight around and slowly backed out. Hmm, that's pretty cool. Like if you tilt the boat a little bit, can you? Does it make it shallower? Does it adjust the draft? What was the other question from students? Um, another great question. I love this question. What has changed from when I was in college to now when they're in college? Uh, well, I've gained 80 pounds, ladies and gentlemen. That's the number one thing that changed. I didn't tell them that, but I'm telling you all that right now. Stay in shape makes your knees much happier later in life if you didn't stay in shape. You know, a lot, a lot has changed. I remember when I had just graduated and got my first internship, you didn't need to know very much 3D animation to get a job working on a 3D game company. They would teach you a lot on the job. I think pre-2008, that, that was the year a lot of stuff changed. I think 2008, I'm going to call it the death of the apprenticeship. When 10% of the workforce was laid off because of the economic crisis, no longer did for access games where I worked and a lot of other studios that I heard about have the manpower resources or mental capacity to consider training up new people. They were too busy just making the product that was already in production to think about the future. It was just hold on, stay alive, whatever we can do. And it led to like an eight to 10 year 
um, frustrating gap of a lack of talent rising up. And now I think now 2020, maybe, there was a couple studios like 2016 that started interning projects again. I got to give credit to Dave Inscore for hiring a lot of Micah interns for Sparky Pants back when that was still running to try to bring apprenticeship internships back in. Big, huge for Axis. Uh, I don't think Venomax does much with internships. I could be wrong. I know Kelly Kaufman did the internship through them, but I don't know how popular internships were. I really think before 2008, companies, there was a lot of money. There was a lot of market capital. There was a lot of venture capital to invest in games. That was before like Amazon, Google, Facebook. Like that was 2008 was before the big four tech companies took over everything. So games were pretty hip still in like 2005, six before social media, YouTube, all that kind of stuff. If you're a fan of real, real time strategy games, like I am, I mean, the last great real time strategy game, I think was Starcraft two. And that was like 2010, maybe 2009, eight, something like that. RTS is, I mean, it became MOBAs after that. Like people who made RTS games now made M MOBA games. Drew says regarding the boat, sure, if you have too much at the bow or stern, flatten it out. Okay, that makes sense. So moving the moving the weight forward and backward instead of having like an edge, like an edge dipping. If, if my white board right behind me is, what the hell? How do we do this? Water line there. So you want the boat to be flattened with the water line, I assume, instead of forward or backward. Okay, it makes some sense. A lot is, I love that question though, what's changed? Because it's, um, it's asking me something I know about. <laughs> Feels much better to try to answer questions you know something about than questions that you don't. But it's fun to think about what all has changed. This is a question that Rogan was talking about, like the difference between 2010 and 2020 seems like a much smaller delta than what changed between 1960 and 1970 or 70 and 80 or 80 and 90. And part of that's probably just because we're getting older, like Rogan's 50 now. And as I get older, I'm realizing each year passes quicker and quicker and I'm not paying attention to the day by day uh, chain, rate of change. And because I'm not changing as much. I've already established my neuro pathway sometime around age 26 they're all fixed at that point. There's, you can still learn stuff, but basically your personality, who you are is, I think, established by then. Coffee today, Green Mountain Coffee from Sables. It's a mix of their house blend and vanilla. I had a donut. Highly recommend Sables from Shrewsbury. Best bakery. Say hi to the cake queen. Tell them Seth Rogan sent you. Okay, I'm feeling really good, but this thing's rotated. Let's take the whole thing. Control A, Control T to transform, and let's rotate it down just a little bit. Does that feel a little better? I think it does. And then let's fix, let's redraw the feet. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm having a great time. It's a beautiful day out there today. 65 and kind of moist drew isn't it isn't it strangely moist out for november what do you think weatherman drew o'hara why am i calling him the weatherman because because boat people need to know the weather it's important to know what the wind is going to be like isn't it uh so maynard is only like five seven like i said and let's let's get another look at Maynard because I just love this man. I know that frustrates my friend Crystal because she dated a guy who was all about Maynard and broke her heart. I'm sorry, Crystal, that Maynard reminds you of a man that broke your heart. However, he hasn't broken my heart yet. Uh, let's see. Can I? If I typed in Maynard's thighs, I think I'm not going to get what I want. But the man, you can kind of tell in the red suit here. He's got like a lot of muscle in his legs. Dude, if we can get Maynard in a Star Wars movie, my life might be complete. 
Like, they got Bill Burr in Star Wars. Can we get Mannered in Star Wars? I think just the entire cast of the Joe Rogan experience should get in a Star Wars show. Get Joey Diaz in there as some hut. Oh, my God. How funny would that be? Joey Diaz is one of the hut clan. Drew, we got we to gotta talk to Devin and make this happen. He's going to film that. Oh yeah, this is the mo this is from uh, Pussifer's uh, music video during COVID, which I think is brilliant. It's one of the best music videos made during COVID, and uh, he's got the tight the tight jeans on, and he's doing these really silly dance moves as a bunch of G men. I don't want to show the video because it'll get pulled by YouTube or something. Okay, so we got our our general idea. Let's. Uh, paint over this with a new layer because this is pretty messy it's going to take longer to clean this up than to just draw over it so i'm going to dim this down create a new layer let's save this man untitled untitled dash one gives me such nervousness let's go to uh what do we want to call this we'll just call this file uh jedi maynard How's the mic sound today? Let me know in the comments. Trying to project for you a little bit today. Drew, I want to have a bonfire. And by me meaning, by me saying I want to have a bonfire, I want your family to have a bonfire and invite me to it. I'll bring a case of Natty Bow. If you can make that happen, I'll show up with bow and chicken wings. You can wear masks if you want. I can wear my gas mask. Get my gas mask up. Eat a chicken wing. You know, I bet that's what the Mandalorian mask is great for. So that thing is so big, you can fit a chicken wing right under, right underneath of it. Chicken wing time. Ladies and gentlemen, Tom is caffeinated. All right, so line work time. I love artists who can draw with those super tight lines. I'm just not one of those people. There's a lot of great artists out there who work real tight. to visualize the knee as a square like the leg is this oval shape at the top and then it tapers down to a square shape at the bottom so it's very square especially this tendon that comes from the back of the the biceps brachii which is the back of your leg the opposite of the quads joe says lol was just about to say mike sounds like the coffee is working let me tell you about the coffee. I got opinions. I got opinions about the coffee. It's real strong. This this light roast stuff is, is super intense. Tom can't have light roast. I need to be light roast needs to be taken away from me. I used to think light roast meant light caffeine, and Joe corrected me. It, it's a lot of caffeine. It's a lot of caffeine. And I had the cold brew from Starbucks yesterday for lunch class, and I wasn't. I wasn't this caffeinated with a whole 16 ounce cold brew pumpkin cream. My goodness. Life is good, ladies and gentlemen. I wish I bought some uh, Starbucks stock back before COVID because I'm sure it made money because that, that drive through. Starbucks is freaking genius. I don't know if you, if you guys listening live in around Hunt Valley, Maryland, but there was like six Starbucks on York Road through Timonium to Hunt Valley. And it's only four miles. So there's like one and a half Starbucks per mile of that road. It's almost like going to New York City. And you can go into a Starbucks, come out and see another Starbucks across the street. Who said that bit? Was it Louis Black? I think it was Louis Black or um, that really angry comic who used to show up at the Daily Show every once in a while and rant. And like get really, really upset about stuff. Yeah, Louis Black. 
I get confused between Jerry Lewis and Lewis Black sometimes. I love, you could do some interesting stuff with silhouette and boots to accentuate the musculature. Something about combat boots, I bought a pair of 511 Desert combat boots and they were way too narrow for me. I ended up ripping, I had a zipper side of it and I ended up popping the zipper because I got some thick man calves. Tom's got like the meatiest, the meatiest of calves and I ripped the thing open. But they had this super narrowing effect because they're really tight. I know that the military has actually gotten away from them. Special forces are just using like Solomon hiking boots now. It's pretty dang smart. It's nice when the military actually has money. Like most military equipment was made by the lowest bidder. You're like World War One. Like if you, you were lucky to get boots, forget if they fit you or not. You're just lucky to get them at all. Shoes and boots. So how else have things changed? Post in the comments. Biggest difference, not biggest, any difference between 2005 and now, 15 years. And then we're going to do projections of 15 years into the future. Where are we going to be at 2035? That's a crazy idea. We're all going to be alive, 2035. What's that world going to be like? Are there going to be 100,000 Tesla charging stations in America in 2035? Fifteen years ago, two thousand five, man, I was watching some some Tool concerts from like nineteen ninety six. I never wished I could be back in nineteen ninety six again, go back in time, but uh, I would, I would, I think that's right now. Tuesday, Tom wishes I went to more concerts. Joe says two thousand five was still a brick of flip phones. That's true. The Razor was big in 2006, six, seven. The Motorola Razor flip phone. That was dope. That battery life was like 20 minutes. You got 20 minutes on a charge. I'm being silly, of course. Dude, I, I'm so glad I'm not obsessive compulsive because if I was drawing laces would just be my entire life. And uh, drawing laces is fun, but I do not want drawing laces to be my whole life. But laces look cool. Something about laces is a lot of fun. I don't know why that is. Laces, brands, braided stuff. Let's get, uh, let's work in a little bit of Darth Maul, like wrap, like midsection wrap on the Maynard here. Uh, we have the, the microphone. Let's get a big clip. Megaphone. What am I saying? Yeah, megaphone. Because I want this thing to be bigger. And then it's got a um, microphone bit sticking out of it. Something like that. Something like that. Any opportunity to make the silhouette interesting, I think should be capitalized on. Maynard does this like punk rock look sometimes. Let's just give him a bunch of, a bunch of zippers. Cause why not? It's interesting. It gives us a little bit of contour to work with. Maybe since we're doing a little bit of Star Wars y kind of stuff, maybe we'll give him a nice stripe, like a Han Solo kind of uh, stripe to his legs. And maybe he's got the, the Rebel Drop Trooper stripe patterning. Let's see, I want to get the musculature right on the on the bicep in the back of the leg there yeah that feels good and then it narrows down at the knee let's do some compression folds 
There's a bunch of diamonds. And those compression folds go to like a Z-shaped fold. There's a great book Brian Busati turned me on to called Dynamic Fabric, I think. Pretty good, pretty good one. 2005. I talked to the class about VR. VR was still a pipe dream. Now it's here, but it's not world changing. I think uh, I can imagine a future where parents enjoy VR because you can get an hour of gaming experience in about 15 minutes. VR is video game interactivity concentrated. Concentrated. It gives you a lot of that tension, excitement. It's just overwhelming. It's like doing an edible that's like, you know, like playing regular video games is like five milligrams and then playing VR is like 30 milligrams. It's just super intense and concentrated. Or to use a liquor metaphor, it's uh, instead of drinking a Natty Bow, it's drinking Hennessy. Straight. Louis the Fourteenth, cognac, just whoo! It's deep. It hits you, and it leaves you nauseous if you don't drink water and have food with it. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm having a great time. I hope you're out there having a great time. Tune in. We've done an hour so far. If you're just joining us now, welcome to the Tomcast. I'm drawing uh, Maynard from Tool with a little bit of Star Wars inspiration. We already went through the brainstorming process. And now we're refining, we're making, we're establishing some lines. So shoulder blade would be up here. Uh, and we have the, the three strands of the deltoid coming off. The first strand comes from the collarbone. The second comes over the top. And then the third comes over the back from the scapula, AKA the shoulder blade, blade. Let's have some, um, does Darth Maul have buckles on his belt? Darth Maul costume. I'm probably going to get a bunch of junk. Yeah. Um, that is not what I really want. Okay, here's a cosplayer image. Not Pinterest. Does anyone still use Pinterest? Pinterest seems pretty. Oh, he's just got a couple dots. Man, Google is slow sometimes. So he's got this leather belly wrap with a couple dots on it. How about Kylo Ren? I thought Kylo Ren was going to be dumb. And then he, he's my favorite character of the of the trilogy, of the J.J. Abrams Star Wars trilogy. And why is that? Well, I think he's the only one with a real story arc. I think he's the only written, uh, only well-written character. And he's played by probably the greatest male actor of our generation, which is Adam Driver. Um, not underselling that. He's fantastic. And if you want to know Adam Driver's range, you should check out that Logan Lucky comedy, that heist comedy movie where he plays the one-armed bandit, like literally like a bartender with one arm. Because, uh, you know, Adam's actually seen some bad, like he comes from a, a harsh place like he was a marine for a while so he knows what struggle is you know he went through marine corps boot camp and i haven't been through marine corps boot camp but i hear it's pretty tough drew your brother went through marine corps right uh Derek did the marine thing he did the marine thing uh did do uh, actually this is a question for the o'hara clan do you think i have a friend who went to the Marines and came back a different person. Do, do you think Derek changed much because of the Marines? I want I want information on his belt and I'm just not finding it. I'm not seeing what I want. You know who did a, a uh, Adam Savage did a Kylo Ren clone at a at a comic-con and it was pretty freaking well done it looks like it's just a band it doesn't look like there's any kind of buckling at all on the oh there's like a there's some kind of square element that looks so hot to wear all that it's pretty spooky though all the different materials and layers and stuff i bet that I think like Game of Thrones, 
the outfits in Star Wars, the the recent trilogy. I don't. Know, what do you call the recent trilogy? There's the original, the prequels, and then what? I'm just going to call them the JJ series. The materials and textiles are really interesting. They don't come across on film. If you go back in time to the original series, I think those clothings, clothing were made fairly cheap and more staged, theatrical, so bigger, thicker pattern, thicker fabrics. And they're not refined textiles. They're kind of rough or simple textiles, but their silhouettes are really good, and they read really well on the big screen. Whereas modern textiles, like the actual people making them, are, are right, they're, they're up here on it. The details are really good, but it doesn't come across in the big screen. Like if you look at the detail, the, ta the textiles of Game of, Thrones, Game of Thrones, they're beautiful fabrics, but they don't read that impressive at television scale. For television or for games, you really have to exaggerate everything to the nines. Um, an example of that, I was watching with Joe, the Sleepy Hollow movie, and the, the cape that Christopher Walken wears as the Headless Horseman. Uh, looks simple in the movie, but I got to see it in real life at the Metropolitan, excuse me, the MoMA did a retrospective of Tim Burton. And seeing that garment up close, it's super detailed and layered and torn up. And there's just a lot going on with it. And it, it seems like it's made for the stage, not necessarily um, for actually feeling and handling and stuff. Drew says Derek was still pretty much Derek. I'm sure anyone would change a bit with all that training and discipline. Yeah. I would imagine, depending on what you saw, too, like what... You know, element of combat he got involved with whether it was in Fallujah Ramadi or if he was at a different part of the Iraqi invasion campaign but yeah I, I used to know this real happy-go-lucky guy I think they were still Facebook friends David Smith if you're out there man um, used to draw with him or we used to kind of compete in our middle school elementary school drawing a little bit and I was jealous of him because he was very handsome and very popular. Very nice guy. Very, very nice guy. Humble, fit. And my man went off to the Marines and uh, came back, I think, different is what I, you know, what my impression of him was. A little bit more serious. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I just lost contact with him and maybe he stayed, stayed the same David that everyone knew and loved. But uh, it would be fun to reconnect with him and hear some stories. Speaking of things that changed 15 years ago, I think the military, a very, very different world uh, when it comes to training. I was talking to Joe about X-Files uh, and the gun handling. And I tried rewatching X-Files and the gun handling was really poor back in the 90s. But then again, it's television and how many TV shows were getting actual consultants like Masad Ayub or some of these great like Clint Smith, some of these great instructors to actually show people how to do things. It took to like John Wick, Terran Tactical, teaching Keanu Reeves how to do actual competition level gun stuff to get gung fu back, gun fu back into the thing and collateral with Tom Cruise, like actually getting consultants in, involved with Hollywood to show what's what. Joe says TVs are starting to get clear and big enough that the fabric qualities are more visible to me at least. Oh, so Joe is noticing the textile quality on television well that's cool that's cool i imagine in 4k it's probably amazing let her be like the video ryan griffin like the video thanks thanks for liking uh, what i got going on today let's see what other likes we got and we'll read those off I do not love Facebook. The interface in Twitch is just so much better, but I'm not ready for getting a huge audience of people I don't know yet. I can't really see. All right. Let's keep drawing. Tom, you're distracted. Get back to work. How much more time do I want to spend this? Let's say 15 minutes and we'll call it. We'll let you guys get on with your day. You people, 
got work you should be doing. So I may have some bracers. I think bracers are pretty cool. Little wrist leathers for blocking attacks from your enemies. Has the political conversation changed in 15 years? Or is it, is it just the same, different, is it the same story, different day? Or is there actually a different tenor to the thing? Did, I once heard that Newt Gingrich ruined, uh, like divided East and West, as it were, left and right. He started attacking the other party in a way that was unprecedented. But then again, people shot each other at the foundation of the country. I was recently looking at some article that had the bar tab of the Founding Fathers while they were writing the Declaration of Independence <laughs> or the Constitution. And it was like 50 guys and like 400 bottles of liquor. And that's how they did it. They were drunk as skunks. Drew says random people deserve the Tomcast too, lol. Well, that's why I put it on YouTube. But there is something about it being live, isn't there? Like when it's the live context, it's it's somehow better than if it's pre-recorded. It's like watching sports the day after. I just can't get into watching older, like pre-recorded football games or pre-recorded soccer games. Right? Why is that? I don't know what the results are. If I watch it on a Thursday, when it's recorded on a Sunday, but I haven't heard the score, isn't it still live to me? But it's not. Why? Why is that? What if the mic has a hilt to it? That'd be kind of cool. Realizing the mic is picking up my the closest thing to the microphone is the keyboard. I am apologizing for that. If you hear the keys, because my mic is not an ideal spot. The mic really should be over in this direction, looking at me from above. But I don't have a long enough cable for it. So I have my microphone over by where the keyboard is. Ladies and gentlemen, we are drawing for your entertainment today. He usually wears goggles, doesn't he? Like that'd be that'd be kind of fun. Let's not draw his eyes. Let's just get some like really weird, like sciencey, goggly stuff. I love the IG eighty eight character or IG eleven character in Mandalorian. Taika Waititi did that so well. And it's got the two little beady like gun eyes and then a whole bunch of other red eyes around the, the top of it. I think that's just really cool. I think it'd be really fun if if Maynard wore like nods. I think that'd be really interesting. If he had some like night vision goggles while he while he sang. probably bang his microphone into the, the night vision like all the time right
So his mohawks these days are fake. He's bald, and he wears this um, fake hawk. So why not just embrace it? Why not go with like some propellers, like fan blades or something from an airplane? That'd be kind of cool. Like turbines. That's kind of neat. Real rooster head kind of thing there. Rooster, that makes me think of Alice in Chains band. Yeah, they come to snuff the rooster. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, he ain't gonna die. No. Heard the Rooster by Allison Chains is about a walking tall machine gun man. Uh, yeah, it's about a machine gunner, an M60, the pig gunner in Vietnam. It's kind of like the cross hilt emitter that Kylo's got. And maybe he like welded on those uh, lights that the airplane guider people have. Let's just draw that in there because I want to see what that looks like. That's pretty fun. I'm having fun with this drawing, ladies and gentlemen. This is feeling pretty good. Sometimes you gotta take your time with something. Gotta take your time with it. So this this line's gonna be tough. I'm gonna have to draw this line a bunch of times to get it to get it right. What I should do is draw this in another layer. So that way I can cut through the arm. It's this thick. That's cool. That feels good. And let's just erase this part. There we go. That's good. Walking tall machine gun man. Base behind me in my homeland. Lawyer, send me pictures of my boy. Mm -hmm. That song is definitely on the Tom Workout Mix. Getting on the elliptical, getting going with, with Allison Chains Rooster. But this is a Maynard meets Darth Maul kind of drawing, so um, you probably should be thinking about tool songs like Flood, like 46 and 2. Like lateralis. Shism. I know the pieces fit because I watched them fall away. All right. Oh, I was drawing on two different layers, but that's okay. Let me just erase the um, area underneath the arm there. That's cool. And I want this under like arm area to, this is like a, I want that to kind of be a laser width. So a new, new layer. Uh, what if I can select, can I select this, this thing? Let's go contiguous. Ah, it's still gonna select the whole thing. 
trying to do that. Uh, let's just do a glow behind it. Let's call this line. Let's call this glow. Something like that's kind of fun. And then maybe we can just do above that, like some kind of LED uh, chain. So I have the screen mode on, so as, as I keep marking it, it gets hotter and brighter. So I just picked like a dark red. Laser whip. Who had the laser whip? What was the character that had the laser whip? Was it Mickey Rourke in Iron Man 2? I liked his laser whip thing. That was kind of cool. Very different from Laser Wolf, who was in... If I was a rich man movie. What was that? Fiddler on the Roof. Kind of fun. times lace the whip All right, let's turn those off let me see if this line is complete select no it's not so let me just wrap that up we got some gaps in this uh, character let's finish up the outside make sure it's contiguous Continuous, contiguous, calamitous. Uh, Je Joe says, yeah, Iron Man 2, that was cool. Yeah, it was cool. That was my favorite part of that movie. Everything else, uh, the Sam Rockwell character, I just didn't think was very interesting. I think he was needlessly goofy. It would have been better if he played it straight. I want a little bit more negative space between the elbow and the thigh. Might have overdeveloped his tricep just a little bit. We'll correct that. Most of that. Let's select that, that, that. Right, play 
got there. Okay, we should have selected the fill area. Let's fill that with some kind of maybe dark blue, dark blue gray. And then we can give it a little bit of color. What's on screen mode? Pink. Something like that, ladies and gentlemen. What's the comments say? Comments say that was cool. That's all we got. Well, I appreciate all y'all hanging out with me today. It's 1230. We've been on for an hour and 26 minutes. Let's make it an even hour and 30 and then wrap up the rest of this uh, painting here. I think we have some color that should probably go in there. That's good. We got a couple areas we just need to erase to clean up. Let's get rid of that block transparency. Let's do that there. Let's do this here, that there. And uh, let's just paint really quickly a couple more things. Um, just a couple highlights. Let's just get the airbrush in and we'll lock the transparency and just airbrush a little bit of lightness on the thigh. Uh, that megaphone should probably be a different color. Uh, we'll just kind of airbrush in a bit different color there. So that thing, you're usually white. Oh, got to erase this area and this area. It's good, good, good. Um, let's get some color in that stripe. Cool. Let's get some highlights. Maybe, maybe some brown parachute paratrooper boots. Might be cool. Let's airbrush those brown. A little darker at the bottom and then some like leather highlight so we're just brainstorming and communicating the idea so that we can develop it later we're just making all our decisions now that we can let's get the majority of the decisions out of the way uh, i want these to be like propeller fan blades so we're gonna heal it up like they're titanium Maybe like the little red tip. It feels fan blade-ish, doesn't it? And then the straps are probably like an olive. This is olive green strap and goggle system. I know the I know the lenses aren't green in real night vision, but that's how we see it in the movie Jurassic Park. Like you have in in entertainment, you have to sometimes demonstrate what the audience thinks, not what actually is real, because people won't believe it otherwise. Like even the movie, movie Zero Dark Thirty, the quad pano night vision, they had reflective elements in those goggles so that it gave the sense that their eyes, like, because people are used to seeing reflective animal eyes in the woods at night. I mean, it's creepy, but you understand what that is when you see it. And let's just create some ground shadow. Something like that. A little red. And some kind of environment. We probably should do some kind of background. What would what would contrast this red? Green, too much. Blue, teal. Uh, what about a warm yellow? Would a warm orange or something be nice?
don't know, like something like that might be fun. Kind of cool. So we'll just do that for now. I think this was a really fun brainstorming process. Let's flip it again. Image rotation, flip horizontal. Uh, we could probably rotate this whole image a little bit more over the cork it up a little bit more still. And things I would consider painting over this thing is to really enhance the like spotlight, like the light on the foreground. I would really, I, would, I have to think about where my light source is and then really hit that and create drama and contrast and uh, dyna dynamism here. So we just kind of worked out the pose. We worked out some of the details. Maybe come back later, maybe tomorrow, maybe in the end of the week, we'll do a full paint over version of this to add a lot of drama to it. Thank you all for hanging out and joining me today. This was fun. I feel the creative juice is going and I hope I inspired you to do something creative in your own life later tonight. You've seen how easy it is to draw. Just go and do it. Get out a piece of sketch pad, sketch paper, get a big pen, uh, do whatever you need to do. If you need to draw with coffee, you can do that too. No problem. Have a wonderful Tuesday, ladies and gentlemen, and a great week. Take care.